accomplished after graduations, also pharmacists are obliged to do one year of service. So let's say that pharmacist gets paid a thousand Egyptian pounds, usually. This is an average. Um, in, in government hospital, they give you 200, right? And 200 is enough to get you bread for a month, full stop. So, <laughs> so that's, that's what happening. So anyways, so one year you have to do that. There is no escape out of it. If you know the minister, that's something else. It can be either in government hospital pharmacy or in government um, community pharmacy. The Minister of Health or the Ministry of Health are responsible to um, supervise. Is pharmacists or are pharmacists are doing the right things? Are they abiding with the law? or our pharmacy is abiding with the law. For example, we have a list of medications that can be sold in Egypt. We cannot get a medication from anywhere in the world um, and sell it in pharmacies, right? I believe it's the same thing here. So if, if the Ministry of Health come to your pharmacy and find something that you have it, Panadol, or you know acetaminophen, right? So acetaminophen made in, in Canada or the States, they will give you fines. So they, this is the, the authority that takes care of if you're doing the right thing or not. There is something called Egyptian Pharmacists Union, which is a very good thing in Egypt, that they, they, these are the guys who take care of the pharmacists. So let's say that um, the companies doesn't want pharmacists, or, or the government say, you know what, pharmacists will make only 2% out of the medication. Well, we make money for medication, don't take it wrong, right? Do we? We do, but not 2%, but we should do more. So the, the ministry, one of the time, like 2009, the government said, you only get 2%. So these guys said, you know, we're not working until you make it 10%, and so on and so forth. So these are the guys who takes care of the rights of the pharmacies and pharmacists. Not wrong, no, not, not, nothing wrong about that. You have to, but it's legal to do that. And there is some unfortunate new trends between pharmacists. So everyone here will be a pharmacist, will work as a pharmacist? Yes or no? Who's going to be working as a pharmacist when you graduate? Nobody? No one. <laughs> Seriously? Who's going to work as a pharmacist? Given the opportunity, all. Yeah, that's my, my point is, my point is, will you find, do you think you'll find an opportunity as a pharmacist? Yeah. Will you work something else? No. They are all pharmacists. I know. Like I know. a medical representative, but like in common. Would you work in, in other other career? Like, would you go to work in uh, accounting oh. as a teacher? Yeah. Right? No, teacher. Teacher in school. Yeah. Right on. This is unfortunately what's happening in Egypt now. There are 30 40 percent work in, in pharmaceutical companies. Do you know the medical representatives? I don't know if you have this here. So they go to the doctor, talk to the doctor, you know what, this medication is very good, and you prescribe it, and I'm getting you a trip to the United States, things like that. So <laughs> that's what I used to do. So I used to uh, be a marketing um, in, in the Gulf, a marketing specialist in the Gulf for, um, uh, for introducing medications and whatnot. So this is what I used to do. And 30, 40% of out of pharmacy don't really work on pharmacy because it doesn't pay. So they go to the companies and work this, this thing. I don't like. Fifteen percent of pharmacists, average of fifteen that, percent. That is a lucrative job. It is. It is a lucrative. This is the problem. But you're not using the, the knowledge and the science that you study. You're doing another lucrative job. In in the Western world, the people who are doing this job are um, are high school graduates that got three month course, which is more than enough. But pharmacists study five years. Now you use science. To Exactly. So you're helping who? You're helping the company to make money. You're not helping the patients to get benefit out of the medication. So you're, you're focused on, on help giving, prescribing this medication. You know what? Sometimes this medication will be good. The other medication will be good. I used to convince doctors I'm really good about it, about getting medication. After some times, I thought that, you know what? What I'm doing might not be the best thing. It is lucrative. It gave me a lot of money. That's good. If you have a chance, do it for some time. But, and, but the pharmacy in itself, not only academic, helping patients to get really, really good use of the medication. But of course, I make a lot of money. Don't think you're wrong. It's really nice. So, 
So anyways, 15% of the pharmacists don't work in pharmacy at all, unfortunately, in Egypt. So they go and work as teachers. They go and work as reporters for newspapers that they write medical stuff for. Communication. For Communication, uh, human companies. resources, um, things like that. This is not Why what not? I would, sorry? Why why is that? Because they don't no, make no, money. No, 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 no. There is jobs. There is jobs in pharmacy, in as a dispensing pharmacies, but they, they don't make good money, so that they cannot live. So they can make good money doing something else. It's the same thing when you graduate as an accountant and you don't find you can drive a taxi. So, well, it's unfortunate. You studied to be an accountant, it's not making money. Well, you have a family, you have a wife and kids, and you want to send them to school. <laughs> so, so, anyways. In Egypt, actually, patients usually tend, uh, don't take me wrong, pharmacists, pharmacists as well do a great role in, in, in Egypt in another aspect. It's not all dark. So they take a role of explaining the, uh, the medication to the patient because the patients themselves cannot afford to go to the, the doctor. So they only go to the pharmacy. Please, pharmacist, I have this phone case. Why, why can't So they give them medication. Well, can you check the blood pressure for me, please? I don't know if they do that here, but in Egypt they do that. So the pharmacist will check blood pressure. Oh yeah, your blood pressure is high, take the normal. Well, they do that because the patient cannot afford to go to the doctor, so they will go to the pharmacist. So there is a huge community role the pharmacy can do. Unfortunately, they shouldn't, but this is what's happening. All right? Well, just talk briefly in the pharmacy system in Canada. So let's leave Africa for a little bit and go north. It's really cold in there, guys. <laughs> so, so, it's like minus 10 now. I'm really happy to be here. I'm going back today. <laughs> so Canada is in the north, as you can see. This is the North Pole, all right? But I, I live here. It's a little bit better. So um, this is um, Canada. And in Canada, there is a, a different kind of system. So if you think about going to Canada at one, at one time, or knowing more about Canadian system, this Next five minutes will definitely help. Universities um, also take the role of education. So the student, the, the problem is you cannot just enter the school of pharmacy after you finish high school. So you go to two to three years into science or pre-med. So pre-med, you study only science. You don't study anything about pharmacy. And then you apply to universities, I want to go pharmacy. So they would have an interview with you and they can accept you or not. So after being accepted, it's another four years. So it's like seven years process. It's not an easy thing. After you finish, or if you're coming from another country, like myself, when I came from Egypt, I went there and I said, well, you know what? I'm already a pharmacist, what should I do? Or another one who's, who finished university there, and they have to take an exam. Everyone has to take this exam. It's called Pharmacy Examining Board of Canada. And this, is, this board is responsible for examining everyone equally, and they would take the first 200 or the first 300 uh, scores, and the rest is tough luck, sorry. So you have to be really good in what you're doing so that you can be one of the 300 or the 200 that they will take. And this exam is not very difficult, but you need to study a lot for it. So the exam, they, these, the purpose of this examining board is only assess qualifications. Will you be a good pharmacist or not? So that everyone, after fin finishing that, do, will get a certification. So the certification from the pharmacy examining board will say that, well, you are, you can practice pharmacy, or you're good to practice pharmacy in this country. It's not a license yet. So even after finishing the exam, you're not licensed. So finish the university, finish the exams, and you're not licensed yet. Okay? The exams are two parts. So this part one exam is questions and answers. It's 300 questions in like six or seven hours. They ask you questions and you, you check which one is right or which one is the best answer. They ask you in what? Well, it's kind of a lot. Eh? They ask you so many competencies. We'll go through that. Um, they ask you in, in pharmacy. They ask you in uh, ethics. So well, whether you, well, you know what? We'll, we're gonna go through it. The second, the second part is an oral exam, but it's not an oral exam with a doctor. They get actors. You have actors, right? So they get an actor, they pay him money, and they ask him to do some sort of um, uh, a play. 
He will say that, oh, I'm, uh, I'm having this prescription, can you please give it to me? And you start uh, doing the same thing like, I'm mean, dead. Well, do you have allergies? Oh, do you have medical conditions? And then he would say that, yeah, well, uh, this prescription of ciprofloxacin is just, I'm using the same example. And they would say, yeah, I drink milk a lot, like three times a day. And they would think that there is, the guys that are taking the exams, the exam, examiner doesn't talk, he's just giving you marks. And they say that, if you didn't notice, well, don't take, please don't take um, milk with ciprofloxacin. So you have to notice that. If you don't notice, you fail. You have to be nice, you have to be present, we have to do everything that Amir said in order for you to pass this exam. We will this do some exam, example. We'll do some example. We can do something. If you have time, if you allow us, we can do something. <laughs> um, it'll be nice. So there's stations. There's like 15 stations, and you go seven minutes each. You go to the first one, there is a problem. Second one, there is a problem. You have to be fast. And you don't really have to know all the information, as Amir said. You, there is references. Open your reference and read. We have to know how to open it and go do it fast. So this is the second kind of exam. So they ask you about patient care, 40, 50%. So all the pharmacy knowledge is 50% only. And then uh, professional collaboration, they get the doctor and they'll ask you, well, what's the dose of amoxicillin for a patient with creatinine clearance? His kidney is, is not functioning well, creatinine clearance is very low. What's the, what's the dose? So you, you open and you tell them. You, know, you have to know what, what's that. Ethical, legal. So if someone says, come to you and says, well, I want to take the medication for my, my wife. Okay, well, she didn't, she didn't want him to know what she's taking. And you don't, you cannot tell patients about their family medication. Well, it's not nice. Anyways, I wouldn't want my wife to know what I'm doing. Anyways. But, um, but that's that's the legal and ethical part about it. The number four is the therapies and direct therapeutics information. So you're responsible and um, giving the right dose for the right patient. You're not only giving the medication as is, no. You have to assess and give the right dose to the right patients. Five, the communication and education. So you do the things that Amir did, communicate, say, well, this is what, this is whatever you, you would like to take, take morning, take it evening, with food, without food, things like that. And understanding and management principles. So what is the right, well, this is for me because I have problems. So what is the management? How can you manage a place? How can you manage people? And how can you manage the inventory? What not? It's very important. We lose a lot of money in inventory, expired medication, right? So we, we do lose about a lot about that. In Canada, there is a system called NAPRA system. So NAPRA system, the mission of this this group is to put a schedule for medication. What is the medication allowed to be dispensed of in Canada? I'm sure also you have here schedules like narcotics are in a separate group, prescription medications are in a separate group, and over-the-counter medication, the medication that the pharmacy can get out without a prescription. So this is, NAPRA are the, the guys um, that can, can supervise and do the schedules. There is another college of pharmacists, it's, it's in every province or every state of, of Canada. And where these people are the bad people. So these are the ones who come to you and say, you're not doing the right thing. Give me your license back. These are the ones who give you the license. So they are responsible for giving you license. You give them, well, you know what, I passed university, I passed the exams, please give me a license. So okay, we'll give you a license. You gotta, you gotta get trained for a, for a year or so. So you give them the training and go back. Please give me a license. Okay, so here's your license. But we'll come back, we'll come after you. Because their, their mandate or their mission, they not only the public receives quality, service, and care. They don't really care about you as a pharmacist. These, although it's called the Ontario College of Pharmacists, they, don't, they take your money for licensing, they don't care about you. They care about the patient. Whether you're giving the right medication to the patient. If you do something wrong, they're gonna come after you. Take your license back. This is the website if you'd like to read about it. It's very, very good website that you can read how they function. What's the main uh, objective of them and how they, they do. Also NAPRA, if you remember that one, it's called napra.org. Um, and this is also give, will give you a very good idea about what's the, uh, what to expect from scheduling and schedules in, in Canada. All right? There is now a new era for pharmacists. So you used to give medication and counseling that was before. Now we do this and something else. The something else is not only giving the medication, but prescribing the medication which is what I can see pharmacists 10 years from now. 
we now can prescribe, which is a good thing. So if someone, not everything, I'll, let me explain. If someone is coming to you and saying that, well, I have a smoking sedation, uh, I have a smoking problem, and I smoke all the time. To be honest, well, what I saw here, you might not have this problem in Ethiopia, very few people smoke. It's a good thing. In Egypt, in Canada, the percentage of smokers is very high. So these people come to you. You can prescribe a medication. Now, with the new scope of practice, this happened two weeks back only. Two, three weeks back? Yeah, two, three weeks back. Three weeks back. Three, four weeks, we couldn't do it. Now we can prescribe Champix or Zyban. Zyban is an antidepressant that is used for, for also smoking sedations. Buprofen, I don't know if you have it here. But this minute you have buprofen. So if you give buprofen 150 milligrams twice daily, you can help the patient stop smoking with, of course, other things. Other, um, like the drinks, lots of water, and whatnot. But you can now. What else? Flu shots. So in, it's very cold in Canada. Absolutely, right? So it's very cold, we get a lot of flu. So pharmacists now can go to the pharmacy and say, please, I want my flu shots. So it's just a, a vaccine that we, we, people should get every year to reduce the chance they get flu. Now pharmacists give injections, flu shots and other, inje other injections as well. If you get a prescription for a dose that you, you think it's not right, like, let's say a kid who is five years old and is getting an island prescription, amoxicillin, 500 milligrams, three times daily, and he's two years old. Is this right? It's not right. So you can change it. You calculate the dose, change the dose, and send the patient home. You don't really have to call the doctor, which is a good thing. If a patient, also we can extend medication. Let's say that a patient coming to you and say, um, well, I have blood pressure medication, and the doctor is not here. What can I do? And I want my medication. So you can say, well, what is your blood pressure? You check your blood pressure of the patient, and check the medication he's using. If he's okay and stable and everything's fine, you can continue, give him the medication, give him a prescription for the medication. And the funny thing is, you can give him the prescription and he can get it in any other pharmacy, not yours. So this is free service that you do. And seriously, they can take it and go to another pharmacy. It's not fair. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so, well, this is a simple and very fast um, um, introduction about how pharmacy works. There's two, two uh, websites that you might want to remember, napra.org and ocpinfo.com. They will let you know and tell you more about the new concepts, the new era of pharmacies, and what pharmacists can do in Canada. I'll leave you with a very short presentation as well with, um, again, um, Basma. She will tell you more about the U.S. Hopefully it's not that much. You do a lot there. Actually, I'm going to save this. Do you any questions, guys? Sorry about that. Any questions? Do you want a break? You good? Any questions? Oh, just a clarification, Megan, about the provincial and federal. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're licensed in Ontario.